Hi guys, welcome to another Learning Electronics Repair video. In this video, we're going to look at these three GTX 1070s and see if we can get one good working one out of the three. The remainder are donors which I can keep. The customer just wants one working one back, any of them, as long as one's working. But just before, we're going to have a quick look again at the GTX 1080s. So these are from the same guy. If you didn't see the video on these, I will link it at the end of this one. But basically this one was artifacted and yet I have proved it was working. I had it running for quite a long time. You can see that on the other video. This is effectively the donor board and this powers on despite the damage here. I strapped the 12 volt supply across here uh, because the fingers are missing. So this one powers up, all the voltages are present but it doesn't detect by the PC. And there was quite a lot of discussion and comments about these, I thought there would be. And so I thought we'd just go over a few things with these, a few updates on what's going on with this one, and then we can look at these. So, one comment is that I shouldn't have strapped the 12 volt across here. Uh, each of these inductors comes from each of the 12 volt inputs, one, two, and three. And you can see each one has a current sensor resistor here, here, and here. And what somebody thinks I've probably done, in fact I have done, is I've taken the 12 volts, so through one of the current sense resistors, I think it's true it was this one to here, that current sense resistor is now providing current to both phases. So it could upset the power settings on the card, it thinks it's drawing too much power, and maybe it goes into like a low power mode he's saying what I should have done is taken a wire from here which it was I originally was going to do and connect it to at least the other side of the current sensor resistor which is basically the connector don't connect them through so I can modify that I understand cheers uh, for that advice you're absolutely I'm sure you're dead right on that one so if we can get this card working at least to detect then we can we can change that but I'm sure you'll agree with me that that is not what's stopping it powering up at the moment, okay? Um, the other discussion revolves around the various pins down here. So I just want to show you what I'm reading now on these. And we can have a little bit of a chat about this. And then we can move on to the other cards. Let's go over and have a look at the PCIe pinout. This will explain what happens if this is being inserted into a mining adapter the wrong way round, which I don't think this has, and I'll explain why. And then we can have a look at the measurements on the various pins we have around here. And I'll explain what is used when the card is inserted in a PC and detected. This is the pinout. And you'll see here, this is like the, the short section of the PCIe. So on ours, the first four pins have burnt away. So that's three 12 volts and one ground. And on the other side, we have this present one hash, which I believe is effectively grounded when the card goes into the slot. Remember, this diagram is the slot in the motherboard. It's not the fingers on the graphics card, yeah? So this present one hash goes low when you insert something into here into the slot yeah that's burnt away the other two 12 volts have gone and the ground has gone so that's what's actually gone yeah now we have these two signals this smb clock and data yeah and it says SMD clock resume and SMB data resume. And I don't actually know what these signals do. I don't, I'm sure, believe that they're actually part of detecting the card when it's inserted. But it might be something to do with sending some information back to the card. Resume sounds like it's sort of a wake thing. But I have to say, I don't know what they are, and I'd love somebody to explain exactly what role these two pins play. Initially, I had a short on SM clock. Yeah, but I've got rid of it now, and I'll explain why. So we have those signals, and we also have a, a wake signal, yeah? And that, that is present. They, they are there. Okay. This one, PCIe reset, that is there. Power good, okay? The way the card detects when you insert a card, once the 
system knows the card's in, presumably because this pin goes low. You have this pair of pins, clock, 100 megahertz. This is the clock for the PCIe interface. These, each of these then are your lanes, yeah? And each lane of PCIe has four wires, two transmit and two receive. See, two transmit and two receive, two transmit and two receive, and so on, yeah? So each of these, if you count them down, there's 16 sets of four. Those are your PCIe lanes. Plus, there's a 17th pair, and that's this clock. So for the graphics card to detect, you have to have a clock. You have to have this pair, which is the receive pair. But this is receive from the point of view of the motherboard. So this is the transmit coming from the graphics card. And you have this pair, transmit, which is the receive going into the graphics card. Yeah. And these capacitors are not the little capacitors on the graphics card. These are the little capacitors on the motherboard next to the slot. The little capacitors on the graphics card, if you like, are effectively in all these receive lines, but they're on the card. So there are little capacitors both sides, yeah? Even though one set is on the graphics card, one set is on the motherboard. So what happens is, to detect the card, we have a clock, we have the receive and the transmit pins, yeah? And the motherboard transmits into the graphics card the request, what are you? And the graphics card replies on the receive lines, I'm a graphics card and these are my parameters. Yeah? And to do so, it needs the clock. So those are the six signals you need to detect the graphics card, not these ones. Yeah? So what happens when you insert the card into the mining adapter, or rather the mining adapter into the PCIe slot the wrong way around? Well... These pins, the receive pins, they have capacitors on the graphics card. So they are effectively protected from any damage, doesn't matter what's connected to them here. So they are okay, yeah? But the clock pins, there's no capacitors on these, I'll show you the minutes. And the clock pins, which are one, two, three, four down here, end up plugged into here. Yeah, the other way up, one, two, three, four. And pin four is three volts supply VCC so the three volts go straight into the GPU which is where these are going to and that's what damages it yeah that's what damages it the other pair on this side one two three four third and fourth down go in here one two three is VCC three volts again and remember these capacitors on the board not on the card so this line the transmit line again goes into the three volts Four actually ends up in one of the JTAG uh, pins, which are not used anyway. But again, the three volts gets into the GPU, and that's what damages it again. So this is where the damage occurs on the clock and on these transmit lines, which, if you like, to the graphics cards and the receive lines. Confusing, yeah? But that's what happens. It doesn't cause the 12 volts to burn out. It, the reason it doesn't, if you think about it, the short end of the mining adapter is now stuck in here, not the long end of it. It's not even connecting to those pins. Yeah. It's only connecting to the first six, I think it is, on, on the mining adapter. So that's what happens. That's what happens. Now let's have a look at the readings on our card compared with the working one. Here we have our test meter on diode mode. So if we have a look, we'll measure to ground... These are the SM clock and data pins. Initially, I had a short due to the botched up wiring that was tagged on around here. That is now gone. And you can see I don't have a short there and I don't have a short there. They actually read open. Yeah, they read open on the diode mode. The transmit and receive lines on here, the first ones are on pins three and four. So pin three is reading 0.498 and pin four is the same, yeah, 0.498. And if I compare that with the working card, again, so we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's pin 6, which is reading open. So I'll go the other way, other polarity, same as the other card. 1, 2, 3, 5 is ground, yeah. So pin 6 reads open, yeah, and pin 7 reads open. That's the same as the other card, okay. 
Let's go for pins uh, three and four. Five one six. Five one one. Five one one. Five one one. Compare that with hours. Again, so three and four. Four nine five, four nine seven, five. Yeah. So we reached fractionally lower on this, but it's so close to the other one. I honestly don't think that is a problem. I think they're reading fine. Yeah. And the SM clock, SM data read the same. But just while we do this, because they're reading open, let's try it on ohms range. One moment, I'll just put the meter onto ohms range. Okay, we're on ohms range. So let's have a look. So it actually reads open on ohms range as well. Comparison. Let's just get a good ground. Yeah, have a good ground. One, two, three, four, five, six. Open. Seven. Open. Sorry, it's off the shot, and I'll do it again. I'll just get a good ground. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's open and resistance. Seven is open. So they read the same on both cards. Let's go back into diode mode again on the other side. I'll do the good one since I have this in front of me. So this is the good one. So the one on this side we're interested in is the clock, which is on 2 and 3, which reads 0.846. Now you'll see this doesn't go via capacitors. The other one, which you can see coming down here, will read open because it's going via these capacitors. So we go to the other side of the capacitor and you read the receiver on the GPU. So that's the good one. So if we just go on the bad one in comparison then, we have pins 2 and 3. You see 844, 844, so basically the same as the good one. And then these ones, the first PCIe lane will read open because it goes via the little capacitors. The other side we read 505. 49505 is the same. So again, basically the reading really the same or extremely similar. There's always a minor difference between cards. I've tested on this one, all from the pins, which you read open circuits, all from the other side of these capacitors. So I've misses are switched off. All from the other side of the capacitors, none of them are broken. That one looks a little bit dirty, but it's not actually broken. They all read fine. And again, on this side, I've tested every single one of the lanes and they all read the same. So, there is no difference, guys, on these PCIEs. It's only the 12 volts in this present signal which we're missing. This is the BIOS EEPROM. It's a 1.8 volt EEPROM. And pin 1 is a chip select. So, basically, the GPU takes this pin low to select this chip and to read the data from the BIOS. And we know from our oscilloscope that is not happening. This never gets the chip select, the, the GPU never tries to read the BIOS. Now somebody suggested it's possible this is happening because I will find from here a pull-up resistor going to 1.8 volts, and in fact it's that one, I'll measure it in a minute and I'll show you where that goes to. And I will also find the 33 ohm, which goes from here to the GPU. Now, I can see the pull-up resistor, but if you look here, there's no other resistor. In fact, there's no virus from here. I'm guessing it goes off under the chip, the track, but it doesn't come out the other side. So I'm guessing there's probably a via under here, which is going somewhere. And this is where the other resistor is, the 33 ohms. Without a board view, I don't know where it is. I really need to find a board view for this to be able to fix it is the honest truth and I'll look some more to see if I can find one but basically as was suggested if we just go on to resistance range okay and we measure this resistor so this is from pin 1 across this little resistor and we have 10k 10k that's a perfectly respectable value for a board resistor the other end of this uh, resistor, I'll just stay on it. It actually comes down here, but it goes to this little inductor here. We know this is a 1.8 volt supply because we've measured it. 
So that's where the pull-up resistor is, and that's correct. What I don't see is the 33 ohms resistor from here to the GPU, and I don't see where the track's going either, just to make things more difficult. If I look underneath in the same area, which is the obvious thing to do, if there's a via, I'm not sure where it's coming. That's the honest truth. The chip is kind of like somewhere under here. Yeah. I mean, I see a little transistor here, but that's going to the base or gate of it. So, without a board view, I, I, at the moment I can't find it, I don't really know where it is. So I can't easily measure whether or not that is intact. But yep, surely correct. If that resistor is here somewhere and it's open circuit, it will stop the GPU from reading the BIOS. As one of the subscribers mentioned, I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> I shouldn't have done this. So what we have basically here is three inductors, which are filters. And one is connected to the 12 volts input from here, from here, and what we're supposed to have down here. Now, the reason I shouldn't have done it involves these low value resistors, one, two, three. So I'll just draw this uh, in case it's not clear to you. And then you'll understand why I shouldn't have done what I've done. I mean, what I basically did is I rewired the inductor here, which is the one from the connector here, which the pins are missing, to pick up the power from this inductor, because it's all got 12 volts on it. That is correct, but it could well upset the current monitoring. I'll show you. So first, we'll take this wire link back off that I fitted on here. A little bit heated now. I probably need to add some solder actually to just get it to unsolder. Let's see if we can do it. Mm, fresh solder. Yeah, there we go. I can show you clearly now the wire is gone. I can see clearly now the wire is gone. <laughs> so, <laughs> I amuse myself sometimes. <laughs> okay, just go on to a resistance range. So we have the power coming in from this connector goes to this coil, okay? But it doesn't go to the other ones. Strange this meter shows you a zero there for a moment, but it doesn't go to there, zero. Yeah. So that connector powers this coil and it does it via this resistor, so you can see we have this resistor, okay? Then the next one up comes from this one. Yeah. Not from here. And it does it via this resistor. Yeah. And then the last 12 volts should come from down here where the pins are missing via this resistor. And it goes to the other inductor. Yeah. But not to these. Basically then we have the 8-way, the 6-way and the PCIe, all 12 volts, each one going through a low value resistor, each one then going through an inductor, and then each one powers a different load. Now. I know from having a look at it previously that one of the uh, inductors is powering the core, the V-core, one is powering the RAM phase, yeah, and I can't remember, the other one's powering some part of the GPU as well, those are your three lines. So that the idea of this is that the current flowing through this resistor will effectively cause a voltage drop across it, and this is Ohm's law, yeah, um, V equals IR, so... I times R, so the current times the resistance equals the voltage. And as the current increases, the voltage increases. So the circuitry on the graphics card can monitor this voltage drop and determine what current is flowing. Now what I did is, I connected effectively from one of these two coils, this one, directly to this one. Yeah. 
I didn't actually do it there. I actually did it here. Draw the diagram right, Richard. Uh, I actually did it here. So I actually did that. Yeah. So the current coming in through the eight-way connector is flowing through this resistor. And now it's powering whatever's on here, which I think was a V-core. And it's powering whatever was on here, which I think was the V-RAM, without measuring it again, yeah? So the current drawn by these two together, now the sum of them, both together, are coming through this resistor. So I will be more, because I'm now powering two loads from the same supply. Therefore, the voltage drop across the resistor will be more. Also, the voltage drop across this one will be zero because there's no current flowing through there anymore. Yeah, because this is broke. So, all in all, that is going to upset the current monitoring. So, because this is broke, how I should have done it and what I'm going to do is this. So, we'll draw it again. Resistor inductor. Yeah, this is the eight way. This is the six way coming in. Resistor, inductor, load. Yeah, load. And then this is your PCIe. Yeah, which is broken, we know. Yeah, pins are missing. Resistor, inductor, load. Yeah. So, what I should have done, and I only didn't do because I thought it was tidier to do it this way. Is I can still take the power from this eight-way connector. That is not a problem. I can still take the power from here and solder a wire to here. So what's happening now is, if this was VRAM and this was VCore, is that the current for each load is flowing through the appropriate resistor. So this only gets the voltage drop across each through the normal V core load, and this resistor will now have a voltage drop across it. If this is being monitored by something on the board, it may be why the GPU doesn't start. I said the reason I thought I'd be very surprised if that is the case, but now come think about it. Yeah, that is quite possible. So let's put the wire in this way, then let's power it up again and let's see if it works now. Okay, I've taken quite a heavy piece of wire because this can draw about up to about six amps from the PCIe. Uh, it's about 75 watts, but if you go at 12 volts, six, 12, six tens is 60, and two more sixes, 12 is 72 watts, six amps. So it's about that maximum, yeah. But if we look now from here, and we just get the meter again where we can see it. We still have a connection to the inductor here and we still have a connection to the inductor here so both the rails that have been fed for this inductor which are basically book regulators vrms both of them are actually being powered from here but the difference is that they're both going through the appropriate current sense resistor yeah let's have a quick look at the resistors as well let's see what value these actually are well this one says R005 this one R005 and this one says something different let me have a quick look yeah this one's R002 so obviously this rail being the lower resistor is meant effectively to have the you get a lower voltage per amp yeah so this is 0 0.002 of an ohm 0 0.005 0 0.005 let's see if it actually now starts up we know it's powering up we've got vcore and vram i mean we can check that again but we did that when i was previously trying this i'll just use this meter because i want to use some merely volts in the meat and this has one decimal place more accuracy which i think we might need i'll show you what i'm going to do but we'll just uh, power this up and we'll just check why is it making that bleeping noise i think the rams come with i think actually try it again the one bleep that's the onboard graphics it's bleeping let me just see, get a bit of focus on this now uh, the reason i know this is not really running because the gpu is, is 
not hot yeah it's all just a little bit warm so we'll go to ground and we'll just measure on this this is the v core and we have yeah 842 millivolts 0.842 yeah and this is the vram yeah 1.35 so we know we have those voltages and by default we must have all the others now what i want to do is go on to millivolts and let's see if we measure the voltage across these little resistors i'm just showing you the low value resistors let's see what voltage we have across them and from this we should be able to work out the current so we're on millivolts so this has 1.285 millivolts yeah i'll just make a note of that okay then we'll go to the next one so the next one is here what's this reading that's 0 0.251 yeah 0 0.251 and then we'll measure the last one which is right down here the one where the pins are broke it's warm but it's not hot what's this one reading Don't worry about a negative, just the way I've got them on. 1.372. Okay. So that's the readings we have. Okay. I've disconnected this wire again. So I'm just going to remind myself. These three inductors, which VRMs they're powering, because they're all separate. They're coming from different 12 volt sources. This one, I think, went into here. Yeah. And this one, I think, went into here. Yeah. So this is the VRAM. This one goes into this main VRM for VCore. The bottom part of it. And does this go to the other one? Yeah. Okay. So basically, this one is this half of the VCore. This one is this half of the VCore. And that's coming from the two connectors here. And we know from the readings we're getting how much current is being drawn on them. This one down here is powering VRAM. And again, we know how much current. So here's our readings I made a note of. Let's do a bit of Ohm's law and let's figure out what they are. So Ohm's law, we know it by now. Triangle VIR. And we want to know the current. And we know the voltage is 12. And we know the resistance is what it's marked on the resistor. Yeah. It's either 0 0.002 or 0 0.005, depending on which one we're looking at, yeah? And we want to know the current. So, somebody mentioned to this, cover up the one you want to know, and that's it, V over R, yeah? Cover up R, it's V over R, yeah? Cover up I, it's V, it's I times R. So, that's another nice thing with the triangle. Thanks, uh, can't remember who you were, but thanks for mentioning that nice one. So the first one was this resistor. This is the 0.002 ohms, and we read 1.285 millivolts. Well, that in volts is 0. That's 100 millivolts. That's 10 millivolts. So 1285, yeah, that divided by... 0 0.002 which is a resistor in ohms so that's drawing 0.64 of an amp 0.6425 uh, 0.6425 amps yeah most on there the next one then this is this one so this is the 0 0.005 so this is drawing very little current yeah let's have a look what it's actually doing well, we have the voltage is 0 0.251 milliamps. So again, 0 0.100, that's the tens. This is the ones, and then it's 251. Yeah. Divided by, and this is 0 0.005, this resistor. So that's drawing about 50 milliamps, yeah. 50 milliamps. 0 0.052 okay and then the last one well that's drawing some current this is the ram let's have a look at it 
So here we have the voltage note, voltage note. That's the hundreds, that's the tens. So this is the ones. One, three, seven, two. Yeah. And again, this divided by the resistance, 0 0.005. So that's drawing 274 milliamps. Yeah. You can see it. So that's what our graphics card is doing. All in all, it's drawing less than an amp. It's not even drawing one amp, yeah? So although this GPU has power, we can say in fact that it's not drawing much current. That's why it's not getting hot. Yeah, that's why it's not getting hot. So this GPU is not running. That proves it's not running just by the current it's drawing. We know definitely this is not running. The question is why? Well, we had a look previously, we know the reset signal coming from the PCIe isn't used, yeah. We had some debate about whether the detect signal in the uh, PCI uh, insert, if you like, the signal that is grounded to say there's a card there, whether that is actually used. But we know it doesn't connect via this. It doesn't connect from this connector to the insert pin on here. We know they don't connect. So that is not used. We know it's got a clock because we tried it. We know it's not accessing the EEPROM on the chip select because there's nothing on the oscilloscope. Yeah. So what I'm just interested to see is can we actually see whether or not the first PCIe lane and the clock is actually sending uh, the uh, clock, if you like, the PCIe clock to the card? Well, I think we can probably do that. So I think we can probably get on with our scope and actually have a look. There's been some discussion and debate about the signals that a graphics card needs to detect or the computer needs to see so it knows a graphics card detects and then how the communication goes between the computer and the graphics card. So I thought let's, let's settle this now for once and for all. So I have a mining adapter and I think you would all agree that only signals that are connecting from here to here can be used, yeah, because that's the only connection between the PCIe slot and the card when it's in the adapter. And they work in the adapter, so we know that much. So let's have a look what we have. So you can see it on the screen. The first ones up here, first three are 12 volts. Now, they don't actually connect down here, yeah. But because because on this adapter they come from this little 12 volt connector at the end so that's where the 12 volts comes from the connector on the end of the adapter so after three of them one two three fourth one is ground that's ground yeah and then the next two are the smb clock and data now i don't believe these are used by the graphics card and i think i can prove it so if i go to the fifth pin down here if that connects to this, it could be using it, but if it doesn't, it can't be using it no matter what, yeah. So one, two, three, four, five. And there's no connection there, so that cannot be used. Let's go to the next one, six, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, that cannot be used, so it does not use those signals. After that, the next one is ground, and then we have VCC 3 volts. Okay, so the 3 volt signal, uh, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up from this end. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, sorry, that's ground, my mistake. That's ground, yeah. It's the fourth one up. Look at the picture. Yeah, it's the fourth one up. 1, 2, 3, 4. But that doesn't connect to here. The way this adapter works with three volts, it comes with this voltage regulator right here. Yeah, that's, that's a 3.3 .3 volt regulator if you look at the part number on it. So that's how the three volts works. After that, we've got uh, a JTAG signal, which is not used. In fact, it shows it's not connected on our diagram. Then we have another three volts. And then the last one we have is wake. Now, wake is here, yeah? Does that go to our... 
adapter yes it does so the wake signal can be used okay so we go on the other side Let's go to the other side of it and then we'll do the shorter part of the adapter let's just turn this over there so we'll go to this side okay so on the other side we've got uh present you know the present signal you can see i'm in there is the present signal used no it doesn't connect to the adapter so it can't be used and just out of interest present isn't connected to ground either i've had a look and it's not connected to 3.3 .3 volts either and it's not connected to 12 volts either so it's not connected to anything there that i can see okay so that's the present signal not used next to a 12 volts again we know the 12 volts comes to the six way connector here then we got ground then we got some j tags there's some three volts so the only other signal that's used is this one here at the bottom this is uh power good okay does this go to our adapter yes it does okay so power good can be used so wake and power good apparently are required signals for something or other yeah because they're connected right now we've got the short bit of it see these are on this side let's do them so we have pins two after the slot pin two this is the clock 100 megahertz for the pcie yeah ck uh, pe have you noticed actually the clock and the data reverse on here and i don't really know why so pin two goes to pin three okay and pin three which is this one goes to pin two yeah why they reverse i don't know but they do yeah okay but we know the adapter works so it works yeah so that's your, that is your 100 megahertz clock we need that for the car to detect after that we've got a ground and then we've got uh, EXPA receive plus and receive minus zeros. This is PCI lane zero, the receive signals. But the diagram you see is for the slot. So these are probably the transmit signals coming from the graphics card to the receive on the, on the motherboard. That makes sense, yeah. So we've got one, two, three, four, pin five. Yeah, that connects to there, yeah okay and then the next one goes to there so we know that the receive plus and minus for lane zero are used but i honestly believe this is the transmit coming from the graphics cards unless some of you guys disagree with me and then well, yeah let's, let's discuss it why if i'm wrong why am i wrong okay so the only signals left then are on the other side and that's on the short stretch of this again and this is EXPA, TXP0 and TXN0. So that's transmit positive and transmit negative for lane 0. And these are on pins 3 and 4 after the gap. So that's pin 3. Okay. We have a connection. And there's pin 4. So we know now what signals are actually connected on our adapter. And only the signals that are connected can possibly be used, yeah? Okay. So I think we can be confident now. We know, without a doubt, what signals are required to make the graphics card detect. And it's PCIe reset, which is power good. It's wake. And then it's this pair of data lines. This is part of... PCIe lane zero. This says transmit, which I think is actually effectively the receive into the card, transmitting into the card, because this is the PCIe slot. And then we have clock, ref clock, plus or minus. And we have these, which say receive, which I believe, I'm sure, is data coming from the graphics card. Yeah, so that's what we have. And nothing else. Yeah, and nothing else. Those are the only signals that are actually used. So let's have a look. We can have a look at what's happening on wake and power good. Yeah, we can have a look at what's happening on those. And we can have a look at the clock. And let's see if we can see any data on these lines as well. Can we see what happens? Let's try with a good graphics card first, see what that does. And then let's look at ours. I have the oscilloscope there. I'm on 2 volts per centimetre at the moment. So... 
we're on this side. This is we'll look first. This is the wake signal. So that is effectively high. Yeah. Let's switch the PC on and see what it does. Well, it would appear it doesn't do anything. Yeah, that, that signal doesn't do anything. It's booted up now. This is a, a, just an old graphics card just to test with. Yeah, let's just have another quick look. So, power up. Uh, what's it do? Nothing. So there's no activity on the wake signal. The only other signal on this side then, it pins three and four here, which are marked as TX, P and TX N zero. So transmit from the motherboard, this should be receive into the GPU. So I'm on this one. This is an LVDS signal, which so is probably gonna be low voltage. Let's switch on this if we see anything. Oh, well. Did we see anything? Kind of went up and then down again. Let's increase the sensitivity a bit and let's see if we can uh, see better than that. It is good. Yeah, it's booted up. Okay. So I'll go on to one times on my probes. I'm now effectively on point 0.2 volts per division. Let's have a look. So pins three. Let's have a look. Oh, there's like a little bump there. Let me change the scale. In fact, it looks like there's noise there now, but is that actually data? Let's have a look and see if we can see anything. Yeah, there's something there. Can you see it? Maybe got one more division. Go up one more again. So it appears to be high frequency something on that line. But it's such a I was going to say it's such a sensitive setting that could be noise, but when I switch it off, it disappears. So let's switch it on again. So there's something there on the PCIe lane, yeah? But whether that's intended for our code or anything on the PCIe, I don't really know. But there's definitely something on there, yeah? We can see something. Let's go on pin four. Okay? Let's see if we get anything on this one. And again, the same sort of signal. That's what you'd expect because it's a differential signal. I don't know whether I can make that clearer on the image. Not really. Okay, so that's what we have on there. That should be data being sent to the GPU, as far as I can tell. On the other side then, let's go on the other side where you can see it. So we have PCIe reset. So that's this one at the end of this section yeah just get on it but right, i'm on it so that's that one yeah what's on here i'm sure after doing the sensitivity yeah cause it just jumps off the screen i just need to set it into less sensitive give you one moment i'm back on two volts per centimeter Let's see what we've got. Switch it off. Okay. So what does this pin do? The reset pin. Let's see. Well, it's a low voltage signal. It's just low. Yeah. It's just low. I'll go back to 0.2 volts. And let's see how low it actually is. Yeah, let's see. Point two, point four, point six. It's about point eight of a volt on that line, and it doesn't change. There's no signal on there. Let's just turn the time base down. Let's go again. Do we see any sort of pulse? No, I probably just got a bit of a bad connection. Then, so the noise actually. And just go once more. It just goes high. Well, high is about 0.8 of a volt. Yeah, that's where that goes to. And it doesn't do anything. So it appears not to be used in any way. Okay, so I've turned the sensitivity up a bit again. We're now on 50 millivolts per division. I expect the clock signal to be low amplitude. We can have a look. So I'm on the clock. What do we have? 
Well, it's actually a bigger signal than that. I'll just turn the sensitivity down a little bit. Okay, what do we have? We have a clock signal. I'm sure we can see we have a clock signal there, yeah? Let me close it again. We have a clock signal. I can probably forget the trigger on it. It's very high frequency. I mean, it's, a, it's, ah, it's there. It's there. Can you see it? So we have a clock, yeah, and on pin three should be the same, basically. Yeah, pin three. So we have a clock, yeah. We have a clock. Right, what about the other PCIe lines? So this is marked as receive on our diagram, which I think is the transmit from the card. And it's on pins six and seven. No, sorry, pins five and six from the slot. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Do we have anything? Well, I don't see any data. Let's switch it off. This is what I would expect where the card replies to the PC to say, these are my parameters. Let's see if we can see anything. Oh, it sort of jumps from one level to another. It was obviously detecting there. Let's go again. No, I can't see anything. I'll try setting the scope to AC so it doesn't go off the screen and we'll turn the sensitivity up some more. We're now on 50 millivolts per centimeter. What do we have? Okay, we're on the right pin. Let's give it a go. Ah, oh, there's like a bit of a bump there, like a jump. All we can see is there's something on there. Switch it off. Switch it on. Very high frequency. Can't really see it well. Uh, Unfortunately, our scope, this is a 100 megahertz scope, isn't really giving us any clear indication on these PCIe uh, LVDS signals. Look on pin 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is the other side of the LVDS signal. And again, it's kind of like there's something there. Switch it off. Switch it on. Uh, and a little bump, you see that bump, yeah. Let's look on our faulty card and let's see if it's doing anything different from this one. But unfortunately, I can't really get any particularly con conclusive readings on this one apart from we can see the clock, yeah. We'll start then again with the wake signal. So this was just high. And what's interesting is as soon as I touched that with my scope, the computer started. But what I don't have is the ground lead connected from the scope. That's interesting. That wake signal basically woke the PC up then, yeah. <laughs> that was interesting. But I didn't have any ground connected from the scope. Let's try that again. So, computer is off. Will it wake it up? No, not now. And that is just low, yeah. That is just low. Nothing on that one. But well, it's interesting, when I had no ground, I woke the PC up, so I think that gives us some very good indication what that's supposed to be for. But what we can say is we have something different here, because on the other card, the wake signal was high. 3 volts or thereabouts, yeah. And on this one it isn't. Let's have another go again. Well, there's a difference there. There's a difference there. That's the first thing. Let's look at the rest of the signals and see if we can see anything. So we'll turn the sensitivity back up, 50 millivolts, and we will look for the transmit, which I think is received to the car. So on here, what happens? Well, that sort of looks a bit like the other one, but I can't get a clear enough idea really to say if it is the same, yeah. 
Right, like there's something going on. Let's just do it again. It's like, can you see when I first go? What? Well, yeah, there's some sort of signal there, yeah. And then it says, then the graphics card doesn't detect. I'm pin four. Yeah, there. It's like it's like the scope has seen some sort of pulse. Let's just turn the time base down a bit and let's go again. See if this shows anything more clearly. No, we can't see it on that. We need to turn this up more faster. Okay, go again. Something happens, it's doing something. And it's doing something that the other card wasn't doing, yeah. Whatever it's doing, the other card wasn't doing. And that should be, as far as I can see, the signal coming from the PC. Is it like repeatedly trying to request the card is there for a little while and then stop it? Whereas the other one effectively requests once and it's... Yeah. My guess, it's a guess guys, my guess is that what we're seeing there is the computer effectively trying a number of times to send a signal to the graphics card and not getting a response and then giving up, whereas with the other card I suspect it only does it once and it responds, which is why we don't quite see the same thing. Yeah. Can we see it any clearer? Turn the sensitivity down a bit. Let's go again. So, yeah, something's happening. You can see it, can't you? It's like changing level. There. Ah, you see it? This is... Uh, this is not you don't think because I don't have the 12 volts connected to here, by the way. I just realised. <laughs> I don't have the 12 volts connected. So there's obviously no power to the GPU, which is stone cold. Okay, but well I made a mistake, but maybe that's told us something. Let's have a look, we'll put the power. Let's go again. But actually, you know, we might, have, might learn something from this. So I now have the 12 volt power onto the GPU, so the GPU should be powering up. Does it do the same thing? Does it stay low? Does it go high now? Well, that does a... Made a slightly different bleep, that's what it did. But this stayed low, so this is the... Wake signal, the one that woke the PC up before. And that is low, that stays low, yeah. That stays low, so... We definitely have some difference there, once again. So that signal stays low. What's going on now on the PCIe lane zero? Yeah, should be the receive on the card, I think. We need to turn the sensitivity up, of course. 50 millivolts. What have we got? I'll put it back onto DC, like we did with the original card. Okay, what have we got? And we get the same thing, yeah? We get that. You can see it, can't you, straight away. Yeah, there. It's at the start of it. That's where the pulse is. What's happening on the other side with the clock? I've turned it over. We can actually have a look at the uh, power good signal as well. This is going to about 0.8 volts on the card that works. So let's have a look at what it does. Well, it goes high. I need to change the sensitivity. I'll put it on to times 10, we're now on half a volt per division, this will probably do it. So this will go to about 0.8 of a volt on the other one. Goes up off the screen. Oh, I'm on, I'm still too sensitive. Okay, let's go up there. Switch it off. It's a much higher voltage on here. That's the first thing I can say. 
switch it off. Okay. It's actually going to about three volts. Yeah. Whether the one was going to about 0.8 of a volt. Whether there's any significance to that, I don't really know. But that's what it's actually doing, yeah. Um, let's look at the clock. So the clock is on second and third pin after the gap. So the second one, switch it off. Off the screen. Sensitivity up, down rather, yeah. And we have a clock. We have a clock. Clearly, we have a clock. I might be able to trigger on it. Yeah, it's there. You can see it. Yeah, we have a clock. So, the clock's present. Go on the other clock. Or some miles up. Should be there. Yeah, clock's present. The last one then is the receive lines. Let's have a look. So, one, two, three, four, pins five. Pin five. What we got? Need to change the sensitivity. Same as the other one, 50 millivolts AC, so we can see without going off the edge of the screen. What have we got? And five. Uh, let's see. Well, it kind of looks like the other one, apart from this bit of a bump. Really, then, guys, this is all a lot of supposition, really. So, what it does tell me, really, is that these four phases are running. They're generating the V-core, but it's not drawing much power, yeah? 0.64 of an amp at 12 volts. It's it's, uh, it's 7 or 8 watts, something like that, roughly speaking. 12 times 0.64, 12 times 0 0.6. Yeah, it's somewhere in that region, about 8 watts. The other four phases of the VRM, 52 milliamps. I think they're actually just not running. I think they're just idling or not even running, yeah? It may, I mean, there could be other bits on here drawing 52 milliamps off 12 volts without even that running. That's what I think is happening. This one, 274 milliamps, that is the RAM. And the RAM's powering up, yeah, the RAM's powering up. So, first thing, we know it's not drawing much power. It doesn't get very warm, yeah. We've had a look at the signals on here. The only thing we can really say for certain now is that the wake signal on this card is low and the wake signal on the other card was high yeah the um pcie reset on the other one was about 0.8 volts and this is about three volts now if 0.8 volts is a logic low and three volts is a logic high it might be trying to tell us something but i'm not sure of that yeah i mean i'd expect a logic low to be closer to zero than point eight on the other card yeah i think two things yeah two things one ask you guys yeah what do you think comments below yeah i'll give you a lot of evidence there i'll try and have a 4 a.m moment and maybe somebody else will have a 4 a.m moment can we get any further with this or do we literally just have a core that's got power supply it's got clock it just doesn't run. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, second idea is get another graphics card similar to this one. Uh, I had two of the other ones actually gone back. Um, I'm sure I can soon, sooner or later find something else like this that is working and then wait until that opportunity, then compare it with the other one. That's another uh, possibility. Yeah. Okay, so. I'll leave that to you guys, another, I don't know if I call it, yeah, it's a failure, but I think we've explored a lot of stuff, and I hope 
you have now got a much better idea of what goes on when you power a graphics card up and the PC detects it. I've got a better idea, and I'm pretty sure you will as well. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you all soon. Hopefully in the comments below here, telling me what else to do, and we can make a part three, and if not, on another Win Electronics Repair video. We've got some interesting stuff to fix. Ciao for now, guys.